Foster his name. I'm, I'm, as we're short of time, I'm not going to read them all out. He's come all the way from Cyprus, where he has a holistic health centre. He's, he's written many books, one of which is on sale here today. And he, he's often found his head up above the parapet, parapet causing waves, uh, especially in Cyprus, where he's uh, infamous. He's done masses of research, of which I hope we're going to hear about today. And uh, he's also, I hear, setting up a, an online college uh, for international students. And he's here today to talk about the holistic approach to the renaissance of naturopathic retreats, which will be video recorded and will be available on the GCRM website. So, Dr. George Georgi. Good morning. And, uh, thank you, Janine, and the uh, British Naturopathic Association for inviting me uh, here today. Um, we don't have a microphone at the moment. Uh, can everybody hear at the back? Is it okay? Okay. If you want me to speak louder, just let me know. Um, okay. Um, there, the the, um, the the what I'd like to present today is I'd like to present uh, the holistic model uh, that I have spent a lifetime putting together and actually implementing at the Da Vinci Holistic Health Center uh, where I work and live in Larnaca, Cyprus. Um, we will not be able to go into the details of each and every diagnostic method and, uh, and uh, uh, therapeutic modality that is used, but I do want to just uh, touch on them briefly. Some of them you will know, some of them you will not know. Um, and uh, as Tom mentioned, um, I have actually put all this into the book that is available downstairs. Uh, it's actually called Curing the Incurable Inverted Commas because it, um, it basically involved uh, curing, uh, and I use that word, not treatment, uh, because these people were actually completely cured uh, of quite chronic diseases um, uh, that the medical uh, profession uh, had said that they were incurable. Uh, that's where the title of the book came in. And the Da Vinci Secrets Revealed is basically the holistic model that I used and the Edel diagnostic uh, model that I will go through. Now I just want uh, very, very briefly to touch on uh, why is it important for us uh, it, as, as naturopaths or let's say as natural medicine practitioners, why is it important uh, to deal with chronic disease? Uh, well, basically because it's an epidemic. Uh, a lot of these uh, diseases are life-driven diseases. Uh, making uh, changes to lifestyle, nutrition, uh, exercise, uh, drinking more water, uh, seeing more sun, etc., can actually prevent probably about 80% of these chronic diseases. Now, the medical profession don't get taught these in medical school, but we do. So, therefore, you know, we are really on the front lines of making a big difference uh, to these chronic diseases. Uh, it's estimated that the global cost of these, uh, of dealing with just these three chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes, is going to be approaching a staggering 47 trillion. I think if you stacked uh, those dollars up, they, they would definitely reach the moon and probably back again. So it's a staggering amount of money. Um, and you know, it's estimated to be anything between 1% to 6% of the GDP of, of most countries, with an average of about 3%. Um, deaths, you know, 70% of people dying are dying because of chronic diseases. Um, the <coughs> um, three quarters of, of these uh, occur, occur in developing countries and it's on the rise. Uh, these are not being dealt with. Uh, they're being treated uh, mostly by the medical profession, but it's really a matter of symptom suppression. They're not looking at the underlying causative factors, which are many. And we are in a position 
to be able to do that and really help a lot of these people that you will be walking through our door more often because that is on the rise. Um, if we look at uh, coronary vascular disease, um, it's killing about 30% of these 70% that are dying. It's a huge number of people that are dying of coronary vascular disease. 80% um, in the low middle income. Uh, most of these, uh, and I think this is an important point, are preventable. Lifestyle changes is all it requires. Diabetes, um, we're, we're looking at um, huge numbers of people, millions. Uh, a lot of them are even unaware of their condition. Uh, they are asymptomatic a lot of the time, but they are developing and degenerating at the same time. Uh, cancers, uh, lung cancer, uh, stomach cancer, colon cancer, liver, breast, these are the most common with lung being at the top. Um, why is there an explosion in, in cancer? Well, if we look at um, uh, the 1940s, uh, up until the Second World War, uh, a lot of the chemicals that we had in our environment uh, what came from coal tar. So we had coal tar soap and toothpaste and you know other other things. However, during the Second World War, a lot of the countries put their chemists at work to uh, to create more new chemicals that can that could be used in warfare. And so we entered the petrochemical era, whereby uh, the chemists actually managed to splice various molecules, the benzene rings, etc., and join them together, etc., to form hundreds of thousands of new chemicals that didn't exist. And if we, if we look from the 40s, there was a, a billion pounds of these chemicals that were produced. In the 50s, it was 50 billion. In the 80s, it's 500 billion. And in 2014, God only knows what that figure is. Uh, only very few of these chemicals have actually been tested uh, for their carcinogenity. Uh, most of them are carcinogenic, but they haven't actually been tested, and they're out in the environment. If we look at the line between, if we, if we, if we say go from the 1900s, um, we look at the level of chemicals in the environment, it's a straight line. If we look at the level of cancers, it was a straight line. And then suddenly, when uh, from the 40s onwards, as the chemicals rose, the, uh, uh, the prevalence of cancer rose parallel to that. So clearly, um, one of the factors, it's not the only factor of course, but one of the factors, and it is an important factor, is toxicity. And uh, we are surrounded uh, by toxins in our food, in our water, in our environment. Of course, um, we also have electromagnetic toxicity now. Uh, this is another issue that is a biggie. Um, and um, uh, at the Holistic Health Center, we, we have various devices for measuring electromagnetic stress in people's houses. And we are shocked at what we find. We are shocked. You know, we go measuring, you know, a little kid's bed and they've got a Wi-Fi, you know, right next to, you know, their bedside table. Or sometimes they don't, but we're still picking up high levels because the neighbor has got a Wi-Fi, you know, on the wall next door. Uh, and, and these kids are sick uh, and the, the parents don't know why they're sick. This is one of the reasons. Of course, geopathic stress is another. We'll come to that. Um, <coughs> so, what are, what are the causes? Um, well, we, we talked about the chemicals and the toxicity. Uh, there are other environmental factors like the ones I've just mentioned. Um, of course, lifestyle, smoking, alcohol, exercise, dietary and nutritional factors are key. You know, I always say to patients, uh, uh, the uh, um, nutrition is the axis of health. It is the axis. Any therapist who doesn't deal with uh, nutritional changes in their patients is not going to be very successful, particularly when you're dealing with chronic diseases. Um, <coughs> and 
these are 80, 90 percent of the causes that can be changed. Um, uh, the people require uh, education and we are in that frontline position to be able to educate them. I'm going through this fairly quickly because I don't want to spend you know too much time I'm just setting the scene of why is it important to be dealing with chronic disease well, because it's epidemic a pandemic it, it's it's growing it's increasing it's not that it's decreasing it's increasing on all levels all these diseases are increasing so when these people are knocking on your door what are you gonna say sorry I don't deal with all these degenerative diseases you can't say that you know you're on the front line um, <coughs> the this is an interesting statistic um, uh, that was uh, put together from four, four and a half thousand research studies by food nutrition and the prevention of cancer global perspective it was a group of 150 scientists that actually um, went through these research studies and concluded that three to four million lives can be saved from cancer each year by appropriate lifestyle and dietary changes. And we have the knowledge to do that, to help people. Um, we are, this is the lifetime risk of developing cancer. Uh, you can see that in, in a man's lifetime, they have 45% chance of getting cancer. In, in a woman's lifetime, it's 41. These are two, 212 statistics. If we look um, 10 years later, that's going to be approaching 50%. So literally, we have a one in two chance of developing cancer. This is not good. But 80% of those people can uh, be reversed, uh, if you catch it in time, by making lifestyle changes. Is the most cancer statistics? Millions of people are dying of cancer. The costs? Well, we, we, we came out with this figure of 47 trillion. Um, I mean, it doesn't fit into my head, 47 trillion. But it's a lot. It really is a lot. The number of drug prescriptions? they've grown from 19.6 prescriptions per senior citizen in 92 to 28.5 in 2000 45 percent increase that in fact um, is going to uh, that has that figure has actually doubled as we speak today this is of course this is what Joseph McCola at McCola.com. Uh, death by medicine is a 21st century epidemic and America's war on drugs is clearly directed at the wrong enemy. <laughs> the war on drugs, wrong enemy. You know, because prescription drugs are actually killing more people than illegal narcotic drugs. Uh, more people were killed by drugs the motor vehicle accidents in the USA. These are iatrogenic diseases. They, they, there's a big debate whether it's, it's number one, number two, number three, but wherever it is in that order, it's still killing many millions of people. These are drug um, side effects uh, because when a pharmaceutical company makes a drug and they test it, they test that one drug. They don't test it you know, in a cocktail of, you know, five, six, seven, ten, and I have seen up to 15 different drugs being taken by patients. And they sit in front of you like zombies with all these symptoms, and you wonder which of these symptoms are related to the drug uh, side effects and, and which are genuine uh, degenerative uh, symptoms. It's very difficult to determine. Um, <laughs> Drug fatalities more than doubled amongst teens and young adults between 2000 and 2008 and more than tripled in the older generation. <coughs> so pharmacological agents are explicitly prescribed for their ability to control or inhibit symptoms. When someone turns up on your doorstep and they've got arthritis and they got pain, painful joints 
uh, and they're taking anti-inflammatories and they're taking analgesics, yes, it's helping the pain, maybe helping a little bit with the inflammatory cytokines and COX-2s that are running around the body, but if that person is eating foods that are causing internal inflammation and causing all these cytokinins and therefore the arthritis and the pain is related to that, unless you get rid of those food intolerances by testing them and removing them, you're not going to get very far with that patient. Also, if they're dehydrated, 60% of my patients are dehydrated. And so therefore, just by putting water back into their system, uh, which is a solvent and we are made up of 70% water, is going to alleviate a lot of these symptoms, simple things. Uh, and then, of course, you can go into nutritional deficiencies and then you can look at, uh, you know, where they're sleeping and whether there is geopathic stress, you know, in their bed or, you know, in their favorite chair or on their favorite sofa and so on and so forth. These are all underlying causative factors. They're all part of the holistic model. And you will see many more of these as we go along um, today. So holistic, mo holistic medicine is indeed wiser because it's a system of comprehensive or total patient care that considers the physical, the emotional, the social, the economic. This is a big issue in Cyprus now. You know, you, we, we have to work within the economic restrictions of the patient now because you don't want to stress them more by, you know, uh, giving them therapies that they can't afford uh, so economic, energetic, we are energy beings as well. We are just not made of cells. I mean, there's a lot of work in this energy field. It's uh, still in its embryonic stages, but it is a developing field. And we can actually tap into that energy now. There are different ways of measuring uh, the energy. Bioresonance testing is one of them. The Russians, as, as we'll talk about later, have developed um, uh, by resonance testing devices, I, I've got one on demonstration downstairs, that can actually tap into the biophoton index of the body and of specific organ systems. So you can actually measure the cellular communication now, you know, uh, of different organs. Um, of course, this is related to the biological age uh, of the patient. This is all energy. The geopathic stress is energy, electromagnetic fields, energy. And this energy will either have a detrimental effect on our bodies or it will have a positive effect on our bodies because there, there are pulsing electromagnetic devices, for example, uh, that can be used therapeutically. Uh, there are other uh, devices, uh, I mean, you know, another Russian innovation is, is they've, they've actually put uh, uh, by resonance devices which used to be big devices sitting in clinics uh, which was a bit inconvenient for the patient because it meant the patient had to come in you know pay the travel etc now um, the the patient can simply buy a, a, a by resonance device like this um, for uh, eradicating microbes for uh, upregulating organ systems etc and these are programmable by the practitioner you know with over 3,000 different frequencies so we are in the embryonic stages, but we are moving slowly towards Star Trek uh, medicine. And uh, I don't think it will be too long before we get there, you know, where we have devices that can scan and treat uh, at the same time, handheld. Um, <clears throat> so we have to look at the spiritual needs uh, of the person. Uh, this is also an important issue, particularly if these people are living in, in countries where there's a spiritual void. Uh, and many countries, there are spiritual voids uh, because <laughs> so, someone's saying <laughs> this country. Uh, it is true. Uh, at least in Cyprus, we, we have an underlying, you know, residual spiritual wave, if you like. Uh, I mean, there's probably more churches in, in Cyprus than there are anywhere else in the world in terms of, you know, surface area. Um, here you do live, um, you know, quite, a, um, quite an individualistic, egocentric uh, existence. Um, 
because of the lifestyle and the way things uh, are set up. Of course, you know, it's an individual choice to come out of that and, and to move you know, into a more uh, spiritual way of life, which is important. Uh, his or her response to illness and the effect of the illness on the quality of life. So when we're looking at a, a person, we have to be asking all these questions uh, in order to be able to treat them using a holistic model. Okay, that was uh, the introduction. Uh, why is it important to increase our knowledge base and uh, move into a, a holistic model? Uh, thi this, what I'm implementing now, didn't happen overnight. Uh, it took me um, well over 20 years of education. And I used to jump into planes and fly across the ocean uh, to meet uh, practitioners of repute and spend time with them. And, you know, that was really, you know, where you learn um, a, a about, you know, the application of a lot of this theory that can be learnt in, in books. So, uh, eventually, over time, uh, I managed to set up the Da Vinci Holistic Health Center. It's uh, on three and a half acres of land. Uh, there's 16 therapy rooms. There's a health food store. Uh, there's also uh, a toxicological laboratory with an inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectrometer and an atomic fluorescence spectrometer for measuring heavy metals. Um, so we can do that to parts per billion level. That I got into as part of my research in developing HMD or heavy metal detox, which we will look at later. Um, and uh, eventually I got to the point of writing the book uh, curing the Incurable with Holistic Medicine, The Da Vinci Secret Revealed, uh, which is a 600-page book uh, with about 700 scientific references because I, I was interested in putting this on the evidence-based map because we're criticized often that, you know, we practice voodoo uh, and it's not, you know, scientific and it's not evidence-based. Uh, of course, when I have these conversations with medical doctors, I, I said, you know, I, I say, well, you know, show me a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, you know, where uh, you have two sets of cancer patients. One has used chemotherapy and one has not used chemotherapy. Does this trial exist? No, of course not, because for ethical reasons it doesn't. All they do is they have two trials of patients, one taking one drug, one taking the other drug, and then they compare the drugs. But that's not the gold standard of scientific research uh, and anyway a lot of the things that we practice particularly the more esoteric practices using uh, energy medicine uh, you, the, the double blind placebo controlled trial is not appropriate for that particular uh, treatment modality uh, there are other ways of, of testing and um, so um, The um, Da Vinci model of holistic care um, I have called the IDEL Diagnostic Program. IDEL is an acronym that stands for Identify and Eliminate. So when a, when a patient comes in, um, I spend five hours with them uh, if they're going through the IDEL Diagnostic uh, Program. And within that five hours, apart from taking a comprehensive history and looking at all the other, you know, x-rays and medical reports and blood work, etc., because that's also part of the holistic picture. We don't chuck that out because that's important information because it relates to, to the patient. Um, uh, and then we go through a whole series of different uh, um, diagnostic analysis. This is not medical analysis, of course, because we're not medical doctors. Uh, and this is something we often are accused of, you know, like recently I've been accused again by the Cyprus Medical Association, uh, who keep on hounding me, uh, because, you know, I, I was uh, using dark field analysis um, and also tissue hair mineral analysis, and they say, well, this is medical, so therefore you're practicing medicine without being a qualified medical practitioner. And I say, well, show me one practitioner amongst the two and a half thousand in Cyprus that are using these medical techniques then. 
If it's Medicor, then all of them should be using it. But of course, none of them are using it. So is it Medicor? It would be interesting in a court of law for them to prove that. Um, you know, when you pull in 10 medical practitioners and you ask them a simple question, do you use this medical? No. Well, how's it medical then? <clears throat> okay, so what, what do we measure with the IDEL diagnostic? Number one, how much water do you drink a day? And, and this is an extremely important question. Uh, you've, you've, you've all probably read uh, Ban Ban Bag Manjani's work, yes? Uh, I, I mean, you can cure, literally cure, I don't use the word treat, I use the word cure versus treat, very carefully. You can cure a lot of chronic diseases by increasing uh, the amount of water that people drink. I don't usually drink from plastic bottles, but I have no choice here. PCBs and bisphenol A's, uh, you know, could, could cause sex changes. Uh, nutritional deficiencies, um, poor junk uh, diets. Um, you know, it, it's amazing with five simple questions, it's very easy to elicit w what type of diet the patient is on. Food intolerances or allergies, there is a difference. One is an IgG, gut-mediated response. One is an IgE uh, response. Uh, I use bioresonance testing, and I strongly encourage all the practitioners in this room to get into bioresonance testing, because if there, were, if, if there was a, a, a war in the Middle East, well, which there are, but if I, if I had to disappear from uh, the center and take only one piece of equipment with me, I would take my bioresonance device. Because that bioresonance device will give me more information than any other device. Um, you know, I've got a device, you'll see it downstairs, it's got 20,000 digitized remedies inside the device that you can test for, including foods, and you can also treat. Um, so by resonance testing is very powerful uh, methodology. It's been around for 70 odd years. Vol was one of the fathers, of course. And then came Schimmel, who did the v VRT testing. We'll look at this in a minute. Toxic metals. Uh, it's so simple to run a tissue hair mineral analysis. It doesn't cost a lot. I don't know, probably 50 quid here in the UK, uh, maybe less. Um, you know, you'll, you'll get some idea. Of course, you have to be aware that when you see the first uh, hair analysis, it's only telling you what's circulating in the blood in the last two months, not what is stored in the tissues. So if there's zero toxic metals on that analysis that you see the baseline, you cannot conclude that this person is clear or clean of toxic metals. You can only say there's none in circulation over the last couple of months. But if you then give a collating, a natural collating agent like the HMD that I developed uh, over three years of research, and that was double-blind placebo-controlled trials with 350 people, and we know it works for most heavy metals, and you run that for two months and then you repeat the hair analysis again, what you often find is that the level of heavy metals have greatly increased in the post-test compared to the pre-test because you're pulling now metals intracellularly from, from the intracellular environment into the mesenchymal matrix and that will, some will be eliminated, some will go into circulation and then the hair will start storing it uh, and the nails because uh, these are inert tissues that are outside the body that do the least harm. body doesn't like uh, circulating heavy metals uh, causing free radical damage in the body. Uh, <clears throat> toxic gut. Uh, we do a simple indicans test, you know, which was something that uh, our, our old naturopath friends uh, used to practice on a regular basis. Uh, 
and uh, it's a simple urine test you know for determining um, the uh, wh whether the person's gut is toxic uh, to toxic body parasites and worms bacterial viral loads uh, whether they have systemic candidiasis probably 30 percent of the population here in the UK are walking into your offices with systemic candidiasis we've got a whole chapter on it uh, later uh, because I developed a whole protocol for treating uh, successfully and uh, we've treated in excess of 3,000 uh, patients uh, with systemic candidiasis pancreatic enzyme uh, insufficiency um, hydrochloric uh, acid insufficiency hypochlorhydria or anchlorhydria uh, uh, these these are critical because what is the most important physiological system of the body digestive system without the digestive system working optimally nothing is fed not the lymphatic system not the heart uh, not the detoxification pathways and so on and so forth so therefore if you're not digesting correctly your food and breaking it down correctly uh, and of course it starts in the mouth so the peop you know patients have to chew their food uh, because that's the first stage of digestion uh, and then of course you know a lot of people do suffer from hypoglohydria and they'll get uh, stomach distension they'll get burping they'll get discomfort ga gastritis even even to ulcers uh, thyroid functioning now you know you're probably wondering what well, how the hell do you get all this information I, I do it with bioresonance testing I can get this information in less than 10 minutes with bioresonance testing which is extremely accurate if you're dedicated to learn the procedure correctly um, uh, functioning of white blood cells um, of course there we can use dark field microscopy uh, there you can actually see white blood cells in their living state uh, because you, you don't stain them with chemicals you stain them with light um, the status of the red blood cells in living blood uh, often you find because of the pH changes in the body this is very, very c clearly reflected in the live blood analysis or the dark field microscopy or the nutritional microscopy because you're actually eliciting a lot of nutritional information from the dark field microscope and it's just one drop of blood that's all it's required um, the cellular me me metabolism we look at pH redox potential and resistivity uh, this is uh, some of you may know this as the BTA or the biological terrain analysis uh, or urine analysis I mean there are books on it uh, organ functioning uh, prioritizing the pathogenesis of disease uh, this is important because it, it, I don't know if you know Klinhart's work the autonomic response testing it's a very very quick and efficient way of determining uh, organ uh, or organ um, dysfunctions organ weaknesses and then it's very easy to prioritize which organ why is that important because then you know which organ you need to focus on uh, in the uh, causal chain or the pathogenesis of disease and often it, it surprises you you don't really know what was the first domino that hit the second domino the third domino etc uh, but you can easily find this using ART testing or bioresonance testing VRT testing uh, inflammation in organ systems again uh, the VRT testing the spinal subluxations uh, iridology if you practice iridology it's very easy uh, to to see spinal subluxations uh, I think all osteopaths should practice uh, iridology uh, tooth foci scar foci it's amazing how many symptoms one can get uh, from uh, a tooth focus which again is very easy to test using ART or kinesiology if you wish um, these are usually siphonospora bacteria trapped you know underneath fillings uh, causing thioethers. Thioeth thioethers are lethal toxins 
uh, which just paralyze the acupuncture meridians that are running through each and every tooth. And there's whole maps of these now that you know, we have at our disposal. Uh, so if, you, if you've got, uh, I mean, um, uh, Dr. Ralph from the Paracelsus Clinic uh, did a study on uh, women with breast cancer and found that 99% of those had tooth foci on the stomach meridian because the stomach meridian goes directly through the breasts. Um, uh, these are uh, these are um, things that are easy to look for. Now, if you find, of course, a tooth focus, focus, what do you do? Um, just by using uh, uh, a soft laser, you can actually open up, you repolarize that those tissues and open up uh, those channels energetically, at least until they have an opportunity of going to a holistic dentist and seeing you know, whether there's an abscess underneath that particular tooth or whether, whether there's you know, some, some issue. Uh, of course, uh, tooth implants is, is a big issue, uh, you know, whether it's zirconium or titanium or whatever other metal. Uh, scar foci. It's amazing how many times we find tiny little scars that are 50 years old, uh, that, but they're actually causing a blockage of the autonomic nervous system. And again, this is very easy to test using muscle testing. Uh, and it is very easy uh, to uh, repolarize uh, these tissues uh, to, to prevent the, the focus itself, uh, the blockage, uh, using, again, a soft laser or wheat germ oil, as some people use. Electromagnetic stress, geopathic stress. Um, uh, again, you know, with a lot of chronically ill patients, uh, they um, are sleeping in geopathic stress zones and I didn't know that I was a dowser until I went to my first course you know and they said well you know here's the rods go measure and, and I did you know and you know if you ask the right questions uh, and there we go there's a geopathic stress line you know Right, right, right here. You, you've missed it, Norman. So you're okay. Um, there, I found one here. I, I, I always, when when I spend time in a room, uh, I, I always measure. And if I'm sleeping in a hotel as well, I always measure for geopathic stress, because there's nothing worse than spending eight hours in a geopathic stress zone, and particularly if um, the there's a cross. You know, if if you know, where the Curry and Hartman lines cross or there's underlying water, uh, underground water lines and they cross, the vortex of energy that is produced at that cross can totally imbalance the electromagnetic field, the very subtle electromagnetic field of our body and change the transmembrane potential of the cell which should be at 70 to 100 millivolts as you know but that will drop if you pick, put someone into a geopathic stress zone. Uh, I would say, and many other research studies, and uh, it's interesting to note that uh, uh, the Germans, the uh, Swiss, and I think the Austrians, have passed legislation that if you want to build a house on your plot, the first thing you do is you bring in a dowser. They measure the geopathic stress lines on that plot of land. And then before you go to the land registry office, you have to take that dowsing map with you, which is stamped because these are official dowsers. Uh, and then they will grant you the permission and tell you where to place your house. Now that will probably save of the 47 trillion or whatever we talked about here. I even forget the number now. Um, that will save, I don't know, a large chunk of that uh, because we actually go with my son into houses, you know, w particularly when they're cancer patients and we measure uh, uh, very carefully the geopathic stress zones and I would say probably 90% of the houses that we measure uh, we find geopathic stress zones that is so easy to deal with because once you've identified them then either you get the person to move their bed away from that zone by measuring you know the clear zone 
uh, or you can use uh, uh, tachyon energized crystals. Uh, orgone energy is another one, uh, but it, you have to be a little bit more careful with the orgone energy. Um, <coughs> Psycho-emotional stress, spiritual issues, systemic entanglements. I don't know if you know Hellinger's work. Uh, I, because I, I'm a clinical psychologist, I um, uh, decided to look at Hellinger's work as well and actually became a practitioner, Hellinger family constellation practitioner. This is spiritual work. This is spiritual. And uh, just like homeopathic miasms, uh, whereby you know, they travel through the generations, well, there are <laughs> miasms or energetic miasms that can also travel through generations and these are called systemic entanglements. Uh, really, it's a, it's a heart disconnect. So if two generations back there was a heart disconnect because our parents are the conduit of love to us, then if there's a disconnect back there, then in a systemic family constellation model, you bet your life that there is going to be one person uh, that is going to take on the... Um, responsibility, uh, they, will come, they will become loyal uh, to that heart disconnect and they will attempt to reconnect on a heart level. It's a very deep act of love, but it can cause a lot of problems on the level of personality and it can also cause physical sickness as well and it can also cause subconscious death wishes where whatever you offer to the, the patient they don't accept uh, uh, because of the systemic entanglement and, and then you have to deal with the systemic entanglement. Uh, if you haven't been to a Hellinger family constellation, I would strongly recommend that you do so. I don't know if it exists here in the UK, but it does, yeah, well, there we go, there's a, there's a source. Um, uh, if um, it, 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 just go for your, for your own sakes, you know, because uh, what I can achieve in a year of psychotherapy, I can now achieve in one hour of family constellation. One hour. And, and that goes to the root, which is the heart, the spirit. There's nothing more important in the person than the spirit. And, you know, if you look at you know, the, I don't know, is it Maslow's hierarchy of needs, etc. You know, the spirit is right at the top, isn't it? And, you know, there are other models of health as well, where the spirit is right at the top. It, it's a very important part of our well-being on many different levels. You know, and we are now moving um, energetically. Uh, you know, the Schumann wave of the earth, which is the pulse of the earth, 7.83 hertz. Uh, our heart resonates at 7.83 hertz. Our brain resonates at 7.83 hertz. Not coincidental. Um, this is the pulse that is, is keeping us well. Well, that pulse now, the 7.83, has moved to about 11 hertz. Uh, that's why we feel that time is speeding up. You know, 24 hours is now like 16 hours. Um, that also has implications on the level of health. Uh, a lot of people who are not aware of what's going on and who are not developing themselves on a spiritual level will suffer on a physical level. And so therefore, spiritual work is important. And Everybody, whether you're psychologists or not, because this is spiritual work, can get into this. You know, becoming a, a Hellinger family constellation practitioner is open to everybody. Unresolved conflicts, social family problems, um, status of detoxification organs and systems. This is very important. The status of the extracellular matrix uh, is called the biological index. All this you can do with VRT testing toxic load of the extracellular matrix? Is it acute? Is it chronic? Is it inherited? Because these are important, you know, clinical decisions that you have to make. Because if someone is, is, is let's say, chronically 
um, overloaded on the level of the mesenchyme and you try and detoxify them, where are these toxins going to go? Where are they going to go? They're going to circulate, recirculate, and, and you know, you, you, the patient's got to be on the phone saying, I'm feeling sick. You know, well, of course you're feeling sick because it's, you've mobilized the toxins, but you haven't opened up the elimination channels. And this is where drainage remedies, homotoxicology is another field that I think is an important field that all naturopaths, osteopaths, etc., should get into. Uh, because... Um, uh, they, they, you know, Regerweg made, um, you know, he, he set up the heel company uh, and, you know, there's many, you know, l lots of experiments that have been done, uh, lots of research by the Germans and they've developed some nice drainage remedies um, such as uh, Berberis, which is a, a complex of homeopathics, it's a homochord of different potencies, um, a Berberis, a Nux Formica, uh, lymphomyosot for the lymphatics, uh, berberis for the uh, kidneys, and nux formica for the liver. I tend to give these to a lot of patients uh, because uh, a lot of patients are, are actually blocked on the level of detoxification, elimination. Uh, I, I mentioned briefly the photon index. Uh, you can even go down into the DNA status. Reverse polarity or spin if you've got, uh, what, what, if, 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 we, if we take positive energy, what does it have? A right spin or a left spin? Right spin. That's positive energy. Right spin. If we are exposed to electromagnetic fields and we measure the spin quality, let's say, of the plasma, it's likely we're going to find a left spin energy. Now, you imagine now... You've, you've got the whole body in the plasma, in the blood, you know, spinning with negative energy. Whatever you do to that patient, you're not really going to help them a lot unless you manage to reverse that spin quality. And, and there are techniques, energetic techniques, including those little boxes that I mentioned that the Russians have invented uh, for, for reversing the spin quality. Um, <coughs> um, I immune system, level of hormonal system, lymphatic congestion, the adaptation re uh, re reserves of the body. This is uh, something I always measure, again using VRT testing, uh, because if you've got someone with very low adaptation reserves, the chances are whatever, whatever you treat them with, and particularly if you go in with aggressive detoxification protocols, that patient is going to have their head spinning. You have to firstly give the body some energy, either homeopathically or, or homotoxicology or, 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 you know, energy medicine or, I mean, you've got to, you know, help the uh, adaptation reserves of the body upregulate, you know, strengthen them, you know, let them open their eyes before you go in uh, with, you know, more aggressive uh, treatment protocols. 